being transferred to another country under an EAW has a huge impact on the requested person. And for that reason, the EAWs should be used only in exceptional circumstances and only for the reasons it was intended to. This means that judicial authorities must assess the need for an EAW and whether the impact of the transfer is proportional to the reasons for why it, it was issued. It is very important to have a meaningful proportionality assessment when deciding whether to issue a European arrest warrant. Only through proportionality assessment, one can decide whether the European arrest warrant is the more appropriate tool which will not affect excessively the private area and the right to freedom of the affected person. We know now, um, 20 years after the initial uh, framework decision, what, what horrendous effects um, EAWs can have on, on individual rights and, and freedom. And you have to imagine being completely uprooted from your life in a minute, uh, being taken away to a foreign country, uh, which language you, you don't speak, um, most of the time, where you don't have ties, you don't have friends, the impact is truly devastating. In practice, judicial authorities across the EU continue to issue EAWs with little to no assessment of the proportionality of the measure. And this has led to a disproportionate use of the EAW far beyond its intended scope, including for minor offences. In a large percent of these cases, European arrest warrant is issued against persons who have been charged in absence. They were not aware that there are criminal proceedings against them. In many of these cases, uh, the prosecutor's office conducts a very formal procedure of summoning and then uh, announcing that person for nationwide search, even though in some cases there is clear data on the case file that this person does not live in Bulgaria. The EAW was adopted on the premise of mutual trust. And this means that there's a presumption that all member states comply with EU law, particularly with the fundamental rights recognized under EU law, and that they conduct thorough proportionality assessments. In reality, this assessment is not done, and there's very little possibility for the defense to initiate such an assessment. Executing states generally take a very formal approach to the EAW, resulting in limited review of its substance. In French, we say, la confiance n'exclut pas le contrôle. And I think in English that would be trust but verify. Mutual trust should not mean carte blanche to just override and, and neglect fundamental rights. Currently in Bulgaria, there is no proportionality assessment required by law. My personal impression is that judges rely a lot on the mutual trust principle, so their approach to these type of cases is quite formal. The mutual trust principle makes judges reluctant to hear and assess evidence on the substance of the case. In order for the defense to be able to challenge the proportionality of an EAW prior to surrender, it's crucial that they have access to the case file in the issuing state. However, many member states, when acting as the issuing state, require that the requested person is physically located in that state in order to access defense rights. There is also no possibility for the defense to challenge the EAW or national arrest warrant in the issuing state before the person is surrendered. And by then, it's too late and the damage done is really irreversible. The difficulties I face in defending the requested person are usually related to the shortage of case materials and lack of much information about the case itself in the, in the issuing state. The European arrest warrant is the main document, but there is a case behind this document. And in that case, there may be facts, both relating to the legality of the European arrest warrant and to the proportionality of it. In my cases where I had uh, clients who did not rely on legal aid, I was able to appoint a lawyer in uh, the issuing state and to get access to the case file. And, and it's not for those clients that there is a problem really. <laughs> it's for legal aid clients um, who just have no possibility to get another lawyer in the other uh, country and who cannot access the case file. How can you challenge anything if you don't have access to the case file? What, what kind of a challenge can you raise? I mean, what, what material do you have to raise any challenge? You cannot know if the person was, was on the run, if she or he was notified at the hearing. You cannot even know if it's a mistaken identity case. You are completely blind.
we definitely should have judicial review prior to surrender. After surrender, it's too late. It's artificial after surrender. When you have other tools, such as the European Investigation Order, the EIO, do you really need, in every case, an EAW? No, because the EIO can be also efficient, can also serve the purpose of the criminal justice. All European judiciaries lack money, and I think EAWs are very costly in time and in money. So why not use more efficient tools, such as the EIO, to get to the same objectives? They must finally recognize in a clear manner that the possibility of the requested person to challenge the European arrest warrant or the national arrest warrant personally prior to surrender is a mandatory guarantee for the fundamental rights and the right to defense 